you hit record? No. Good to go? Yeah. <laughs> Adam, so I suppose the first question is, would you rather be playing this final in Perth? Ah, uh, yes. No doubt. Oh, look, it is what it is. We've 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 known throughout the whole tournament that the final is going to be played here. Um, yep, I'd love to be playing in front of 19,000 fans in Orange back at home, but um, it is what it is, like I said, and um, look, we're, we're just happy to be here. So, in another final, and um, yeah, we've, we're obviously, last time we were here was the Shield final last year for Western Australia, and that didn't quite go to plan, so hopefully we can uh, have some better memories this time around. What did you think about the streaker back at the Wacker who gave you a puddle? Um, yeah, we gave Huggy, uh, Hoggy a cuddle, he didn't give me a cuddle, oh, but um, yeah, look, he, um, I don't know if they found him or not, I know there was a bit, <laughs> bit of a thing out there trying to trying to catch him, I think he got back over the fence okay, so oh, look, you don't condone that sort of thing as a player, um, we've obviously got very passionate fans back in Perth, but um, yeah, you probably don't like seeing that. Yeah. Well, I suppose on the game itself, obviously you, know, you, got, you guys are taking some good momentum out of the season, how do you see, see the match up against the Sixers? I think we're two very evenly matched teams. I think we've had some cracking games in the past um, and we've been on the right side of the last couple. So we'll take a lot of confidence out of that. I think the Sixers are a very good side and I think honestly it'll come down to those pressure moments in the game and whichever team stands up and, and, and wins those pressure moments will probably win the game. Your bowl has been fantastic this season. It seems like you can defend whatever total. How much confidence does that give the team that no matter that if the batters do fail a little bit, you've got the bowlers to back them up. Yeah, that's been a huge part of how we've got here this year. Our, our bowling unit has been outstanding. We've got three guys, I think, have taken 14 wickets. Brad Hogg's gone for less than six runs and over. So uh, they've been outstanding. I think our fielding has backed them up really, really well. And yeah, we've probably not always got the runs on the board that we would have liked, but we've managed to defend those totals. So whether we bat first, whether we chase, um, we'll certainly be confident. What is it about Hoggy? Like he's saying he's 42 or 43 now. He's bouncing around like he's a like he's a 21 year old rookie. What's he like around the group? Uh, yeah, that's exactly what he's like around the group. He bounces around like he's probably a 15-year-old rookie, not a 21-year-old. But no, he's he's been brilliant. Obviously, we missed him in the first part of the tournament, but since he's come in, he just hasn't put a foot wrong, and he's been he's been outstanding. And I'm sure he'll be a key player for us tomorrow. Some danger men in the Sixers lineup at the top, but also Jordan Silk, who has kind of shown he can do do a bit of damage. Um, you guys have to look to limit anyone, or just. Oh, like I said before, I think they're a pretty well-rounded team, to be honest. And they've got they've got danger players all through their batting lineup, and they've got a very good bowling attack with two very good spinners, and obviously Brett Lee leading their attack. So no, look, we'll put the same amount of planning and preparation into this game as we have done with all our games. And no, like I said, it'll probably just come down to those those pressure moments. Expecting anything more from them in, in Binger's last game? Oh, look, Binger's. A, champion bloke and a champion cricketer and um, I'm sure it would be a fitting farewell for him if he was to go out on a, on a winning note but we're certainly here to try and spoil that party. Do you think you might get some of the support here or do you think it might be a bit of pro towards the uh, Sixers tomorrow night? Oh, no, look, we're two hours away from Sydney, aren't we? We've got a few people coming on the planes over from Perth but it's certainly going to be a pro Sydney crowd, we've got no doubt about that. But look, again, it is what it is. Um, we've had a very good record away from home this year so um, hopefully we can continue that. What is it about the Scorchers? Like you guys have made the finals, I think, what, all four of the BBLs now. Is, what's been the secret? Oh, it's just a culture of belief, I think, that we can win most games from, from any position. And, and we've had a fair personnel change this year from last year. And um, the guys, the young guys who have come into that culture have, have put their hands up and, and performed really, really well. We've unearthed guys like AJ Ty. I think Marcus Harris has done a great job. Ashton Agar's performed when he's got a game as well. So those guys have come straight in and performed and, and done really well. So you mix that youth with a couple of experienced heads around it and it seems to be a good mix. How's Nathan called an old guy? He was carrying a bit of a, obviously missed a while with a hamstring injury, came back on, on Sunday. How's he going? He's going good. He put up a little bit sore the other day, but he'll be fine to go for tomorrow. He, um, he actually played a really crucial role in the semi-final the other night. He took two wickets in that over, including Kevin Peterson, which was which was a huge wicket in the context of the game. So we've missed him throughout the whole season, but it's nice to have him and, and Sean Marsh back towards the back end. Yeah. Did Sean Marsh play the semi-final, did he? Or? Yes. Yeah, he did. Yep. <laughs> and what about AJ Ty? Look, you mentioned he... You know, he had a great game, took four wickets on the weekend, but that was after, I suppose, having that maiden over when he batted at the end there. How's he, I suppose, you know, has he recovered? How's he bounced back from that? Oh, I think it probably just shows his mental strength, to be honest. So I think facing six dot balls, I don't think it's ever been done before in the 20th over of a game, but um, for him to then be able to shake that off and then put in a man, man of the match performance with the ball, just um, look, that just shows what a sort of character he is. So, um, yeah, he's probably down in the dumps a little bit at, at the mid innings break, but 
um, he bowled superbly and, and, and won us the game. So, um, yeah, look, we'll, we've had a little bit of a chat about his batting. I think he'll go about it a little bit differently if he's in that situation again, but he was terrific. We probably have a little section of the crowd supporting you guys with Jason Berendorf's family and friends. How big is it for him to be able to be back home? I oh, know he's very happy to be back here. Um, look, he performed really, really well throughout this whole tournament. He bowled beautifully in the Shield final here last year. He took four wickets in the Prime Minister's game. So um, we're looking for him to again lead our attack, take some early wickets, hopefully. Um, and yeah, look, he, like all our players, are very excited to get out there tomorrow. He can't be far away from playing for Australia, surely, given his form of the big bash. And yeah, that's, that's a very good question. Um, his performances for the last 18 months probably in, in all forms of cricket have been outstanding. So um, he's probably my tip to be the domestic player of the year in the AB medal tonight, um, which would just be another gong to his name. And yeah, look, he can't be far away. Um, I'm sure with Ashes series coming up in the, the near future that he'll certainly be talked about. Thank you. Thank you.